Welcome to our lecture online. Sometimes it helps to see a nice visual perspective of a certain rule, and in this case, property 4 on the Fourier transforms, the frequency shifting property. We understand that whenever you multiply your function in the time domain times e to the j omega sub naught t, then we take the Fourier transform of that. That means that in the frequency domain, there'll be a shift of omega zero in the frequency. So now you can see that if you multiply the time domain function by the cosine of omega t, we actually separate that into two separate functions, f of t multiplied times e to the j omega t, and f of t multiplied times e to the minus j omega t. And of course, we have reduction in the amplitude, so we have to multiply the whole thing by one half, and then you realize you end up with the, the uh, Fourier transform shifted to the left by omega t, the Fourier transform shifted to the right by omega, I shouldn't say omega t, but omega, and of course the amplitude reduced by one half. Visually, what does that look like? Well, if we have f of omega represented by this function, let's say just any arbitrary function, in this case a triangular function with a certain amplitude a, you can see here that it ranges from minus omega 1 to plus omega 1. And then if we have that shift in the frequency because we multiplied the function that gave you this Fourier transform by the cosine of omega sub naught t, then notice what happens. We have a shift to the left by omega sub naught and a shift to the right by omega sub naught. Notice that the functions in the, or the two half functions, if you want to call it that, in the frequency domain still have the same width from minus minus omega 1 to plus omega 1, just like you had over here, but shifted to the left by omega sub 0. On the right, the same thing again. The width here is still the same. It's omega sub naught plus omega 1, omega sub naught minus omega 1. Again, that's the width here. But notice that the amplitude now is only half of what it was over here. It is interesting to note that the total area of this is exactly the same as the total area over there. Hmm. Kind of an interesting thing, but what's more important is that the frequency has been shifted to the left and to the right by this particular action. So now we can see that we can use that for various things. If we have to shift something in frequency so we can separate it from another carrier signal, that's kind of the idea for frequency modulation, in this case amplitude modulation, I should say. So we'll see some examples of how that's applied in a more practical sense. But hopefully this will give you some idea of what that looks like physically in the frequency domain. Now let's look at some examples to give you some more enhanced understanding of the concept of frequency shifting using the Fourier transform. And that's how it's done.